When I leave out of town and I come home, I come to the mountains and I see the two peaks on Kanaktai. That gives me a sense of now that I'm, I'm close, I'm close to being home. And it always just has a feeling inside that doesn't give that to me anywhere else. When I was younger, we would walk by mortars and see things that were kind of like um, left by our ancestors and just knew that that was just, that was who we are. That was a part of us. I can walk out my door and walk down to the lake and still see mortars and pestles and arrowheads and then I'm connected to that. We've always been here at Alem. Our word for our people is um, um tempo, and that's of the Alem people. Where we're at, Lem Tsaoklo, which is, you know, the Alem village that's here. It's different from, you know, the Eastern Pomo, Central Pomo, Coastal Pomo. We're all individual nations. The Southeastern Pomo were all tribes that lived on islands. And we were known as Khamfo, which just means water people. But Khamdot, Alamadan, and Khoimadan were all Southeastern Pomo villages that were on islands. As a community, we strive because there was Khabtin is what we call the lake. It just means big water. But for us, it was a huge resource with all that it provided. If you imagine this place without all of the houses, and you look out on the lake, and you imagine a lake filled with tule elk and thousands of birds, and you see all of these things in your mind's eye without these houses, People must have lost their minds when they came over. And that's why they said, I want this. This is mine. Tavernier's painting of the roundhouse and the dance inside, it's a very ironic image in a lot of different ways. It's this moment of cultural encounter where you see people coming in to a native homeland and engaging in the business of extracting natural resources. I think it's fascinating that you have the banker and the overseas investor in the dance house during the ceremony. And they are really representing one side of what the ceremony is trying to, you know, sort of eradicate or certainly protect Native people from. So it's definitely a painting that's bittersweet. The ceremony that's depicted in Tavernier's painting is a newer dance that they called Mofongse, and it just means the people's dance. It was something that came after contact, I think with the dying off of a lot of the Native people due to you know, the diseases and enslavement, starvation. The Mofongke was a dance that was to protect everyone from this. When you enter ceremony and you're a part of ceremony, you're this dancer, whether you're a dancer or whether you're a singer, everything that's, you know, that, that you're dancing for is for the betterment of the community, the betterment of the people. And my dad used to say, this is what makes the water flow and the wind blow. Without this, it wouldn't happen. The dances that we hold are to renew our earth. They're to renew our people. The people give prayer to our Mother Earth to fix itself. As a Pomo, I can appreciate all of the things that went into this painting, and it shows a lot of the beauty of who we are. But at the same time, you have to understand it for what it is, which was the contamination of an entire side of a lake. And then you go, Oh, well, how did it affect those baskets that are in the painting? How did it affect those dancers that are in the painting? How did it affect those mothers that are in the painting, those children, those men? Elem Indian Colony actually sits on the mine tailings from the Sulphur Bank mine. So what that means is that as they were digging, all of the little contaminated leftovers they brought over here to the tribe and left them out. And so that causes mercury poisoning. So basically when this mine was open, it 
poisoned this entire land. You put poison into a land, you're harming your whole lake ecology. So pomos are basketry people, which means our plants go in our mouths when we process our basketries. So as we're doing this, we're putting possibly contaminated things into our mouth. So then you're seeing mouth cancers, you're seeing things that are happening with your teeth. So it affected everything. One of the things that basketry enabled Native peoples to do is to perpetuate this real personal connection with the land, the homelands. So the baskets are a real reflection of extensive ethnobotanical knowledge on the part of Native peoples. Really just thousands of years of living with the plants, studying the plants, experimenting with the plants. You really had to understand really intimately the life cycles of everything that was around you and work with those. One of the things that's so interesting to see in baskets that were made before 1800 or in the early 1800s is how large those baskets were. And what that tells you is just how abundant those resources were in the landscape because people had that much material available to them. It helped me understand the scale of change that's happened in California to the environment in just a short period of time. But it also showed me what a huge impact removing Native peoples from the landscape in terms of being able to tend to the land, the way that they once had, has also had on that landscape. Tverdi has done a remarkable job of capturing the drama of a ceremony in the roundhouse. And it really is this very immersive experience. I think there's a very satisfying feeling about that sort of like a hug, you know, that, that round shape. Especially in the roundhouses that are put down in the earth, there's this real feeling of almost being in a basket. The vision that came for the roundhouse, that it was this basket that was supposed to be in the ground that was gonna save the people from all the catastrophes that were gonna happen. That's the reason why that it's, you know, in the ground. I'm sorry that people that are seeing the exhibit are getting just a bare glimpse of what the actual experience is like and the power of it. And that power is what helped us survive. We as indigenous people were always looked at as in the past and not looked at as us being here today. But people need to know that regardless of everything that happened, the Yelan people are still here in Lake County. Those ceremonies that are in his work of art are still happening today, and that's special. I'm glad to be a Lem Tiwi, a Lem man from this place, to walk next to things that my ancestors left behind for me, and to know that my children are picking up ceremonies and the things that are happening so that people just understand that. We live in today's society. We're not something of the past. We're here today.